Okay, in this video, I am going to go over time travel and the theory and concept behind it. And what I want everybody to first know is that this video is basically going to verify and prove that you know time machines exist and they're possible and I don't want to spoil it because I, I want to kind of lead you up into the revelation of this discovery but basically I do have good news and I'm going to try to explain why time travel is possible, what it is, and the different types of time travel. Uh, first of all, the first main principle of time travel and, you know, first thing anybody thinks of, I would imagine, it, when you get into time travel is everyone thinks of a time machine or maybe even back to the future. So in order for me to go over this theory and hypothesis, it's best first to understand what exactly is time travel going to be doing and what is it capable of and what is its purpose and and understanding the science behind it basically just kind of knowing what it is and i think the biggest problem that i've noticed um with time travel is i think people kind of misunderstand misinterpret what a time machine actually is uh, so, I think I'm gonna just get to the point. Um, I didn't. I don't want to really spoil it because it's one of those things I kind of want to lead up into. But I, I feel like you know we're kind of led up into it now, and we're gonna go over my theory and hypothesis of this. First and foremost, I think I need to basically uh, go over the importance of the different types and levels and magnitude of time travel. So I think the first level of teleportation and time travel everybody you know thinks about is being able to go back in time or go into the future, either or. But most importantly, everybody thinks uh, about time travel the first thing they hear about it is okay we're going to be able to go back into the future and basically it's almost like a form of teleportation so some people may just kind of think of it as teleportation which it's a type of time travel um, there are there are different types of time travel um, and you know the magnitude is all relative to you know basically the boundaries so first of all everyone's kind of looking for the ultimate ability of time travel you know full control of time travel um so first and foremost we we need to define you know what is time travel what happens what what does it mean if you go back into the future I discovered this a while ago, probably years ago, and I just kind of totally forgot to make a video about it. Um, so first and foremost, if you are going to go into the past, the concept and theory behind this aspect, we need to understand is what happens what's what is it gonna do what is the expectation what is the science behind going into the past so i i noticed that basically going into the past is erasing information so you're gonna be able to erase information
or erase time. You're, you're going to be able to erase, you know, what has happened, what's going on. So you're you're basically just deleting. It's almost a form of deletion. Erase in. Sorry, I totally just. Forgot what I was gonna write there. So yeah, erase information. I'm sorry, info. I'll put info to make it short. So it's erasing information, but it's the opposite if you go into the future. Now I notice this after I kind of like thought about it and I contemplated it and I realized, oh wow, future time travel. Is the opposite of erasing information you're going to be able to load you can load info so essentially if we're gonna go into the future you're gonna load information and then basically all those events in between that time of whatever potential distance you were to travel into that future when you reach that point of the future all that information in between has to be loaded and then that essentially is going to be what can take you into the future and what is con considered being able to go into the future or having control over the future so you can erase information and load information now both sides of these are equally uh, I would say difficult and they're equally complex so you know one side or the other isn't necessarily harder to do than the other because they're both virtually impossible um, but not necessarily because um, there's a limitation on what we're capable of doing so in reality if I want to be able to go into the past that means that I can erase information out of the universe so if you have control over erasing information out of the universe you essentially are somewhat are able to go back in time because that's the the whole consensus and uh, the ability of what is it, what does it mean to go into the past? Uh, yeah, you you're gonna erase information. Um, so in in reality, if you can go into the future, it's it's the opposite of what I just said. You're gonna be able to load that information. Um, so let's say potentially, you know, you're loading. Let's kind of scale it down. Let's just say that there's earth full of 10 people at the time that you began to go into the future and then after you go into the future so before you go into the future you let's say there's 10 people if you potentially are going to go into the future let's say 100 years now that information of that 100 years is just going to be loaded um so you're you're basically essentially going to be able to load information so let's say if you were to travel into that future now that information of only 10 people being there is like you're basically loading we we basically conclude let's say uh, you load 90 more people into uh, existence so if you were to go into the future and then you loaded 90 people into the into what's actually happening out you know loading them into the future from the future going to the future you're basically essentially loading information that is going to actually be there for those 90 people and then potentially whatever information you change and load out of and into from those other current 10 people so you basically have access to 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 change that information relative to you know what you're going to time travel into and you basically have to 
create that information. So that information has to be created. So if you can go into the future, you're going to be able to load information. But if you can go into the past, you're going to be able to erase information. So potentially loading, going into the future, you're going to have 90 people that all of a sudden they, they, they somewhat teleport into existence. And then all of what they did from that point before and after is loaded and created at that point. So it's created. It's not necessarily that anything in between that, that point actually even happens because it's just relative to what is actually get being being loaded or not loaded so it's also a form of not having to do the work so let's say uh, an example of time travel into the future is uh i want a hundred story skyscraper to all of a sudden just be there um, so potentially if you can use some sort of time machine to where all of a sudden all that information just loads, boom. It's almost like a – that's what I was going to get into next. It's like a computer. Um, and that's where I'm going to move on to the next aspect of this is to explain how uh, – the coolest thing about time travel is that we already accomplished time travel and we already have a time machine. It's just, it's on a smaller scale than most people realize and that's a computer. So essentially a computer is a time machine. Why? Because you can erase information and then you can load information and then it does the work for you. So going into the, fut into the future, you, you don't have to do the work. The work is already done for you and it automatically does it. However, potentially that happens if you go into a re realistic reality of it to occur. Um, so a computer... A computer. I'm gonna keep it short. A computer is a time machine. Why? Why is it a time machine? Because it's time. A time machine has control over time, and the definition of time is what's actually happening, what's going on, or what's going to be going on, what's happening. So when you when you understand what time is you're you you actually realize like okay so if time is what's actually happening uh all it is going to take in order to create a time machine is if you have control over what's actually going on what's happening and that's what a computer is, and that's what a computer does. It has control over what's happening, what's going on. It, it has control over time. Um, so essentially, a computer can go into the past and it can go into the future because it's a matter of loading information and erasing information. It's one and the same. It's just a matter of the scale of the magnitude that you want to maybe take it up to. So... The only difference between the time machine that most people are conceiving in their head and a time machine that we already have, a computer, is that it's on a smaller scale, I guess you could say. So we basically have created a time machine that, as at, that it is at 50% power. 50% ability now to have full control over a time machine it would be able to access the universe so if you could access the universe to erase and load information which potentially is what the big bang is is just time travel and then loading information and then that's why nobody sees it come from anywhere is because that's uh,
Uh, so we already have a lot to work with uh, now that we understand uh, a computer itself is a time machine it's unbelievable because you know before you kind of really notice what it is and what it's doing it you're still potentially fantasizing of what a time machine could do and that that's what a time machine can do uh, it can load and erase information and uh, so I think everybody needs to basically look at your computer look at your cell phone uh, any sort of computer and realize wow it's it, it's it's time machine so you could potentially call a computer a time machine because it has control over what's happening and what's going on I'm trying to make sure that I didn't miss any sort of cool details I was gonna go over with with it um i'm i'm fairly sh sure that i basically cover the the main majority of it so uh in conclusion we're i'm just gonna leave at the fact that time travel is more possible than everybody realizes it's just a matter of if we potentially wanted to time travel inside of the universe then somehow some way you're going to have to have access to the universe to the computer okay and as far as everyone knows of you know that's what god is uh, he's the one who has access and full control over the computer the universe because it's a computer and that's why everyone's looking at the the universe and they're coming to the understanding oh it's a mathematical reality it's a mathematical reality which is the same thing <laughs> that computers are and are doing it it just uses computer or mathematics